we had uh, a machine. We consumed an acre an hour and it was, was easy. It's widely known that we're one of the fastest growing cities. It was at a scale where it became unwalkable and so you know, cars were necessary. Phoenix is the land of the garage door and the personal car. The only way you play in any meaningful way in society is, is if you have an automobile. We have criminalized the pedestrian, we've criminalized the, the cyclist. We continue on a trajectory where we simply go for the easy dollar. We will lose. We can't continue to do what we're doing. Now there's a whole team of people who would say people moved to Arizona for a single family home and I would counter by saying that's all we've offered them well. The quality of life plan has been fine that we want to be like every other neighborhood. We want to be the same. We want to have the same amenities. We want to have the same recreation. Restaurants have closed. Our programming has got cut back. All of the arts and cultural institutions have been affected. Um, independent businesses have been struggling. There isn't the density of people down here any more to support a lot of what these, uh, these businesses are struggling with. Once the nation's fastest growing urban area, the region's population growth has slumped to a stagnant 1%. Over 40,000 people have walked away from their homes and unemployment is the second worst in the nation. Trends are clearly changing and local leadership is taking another look at assumptions made in past decades that currently define our quality of life today. Greater Phoenix's model of rapid outward growth toward cheap land on the fringe of the city has resulted in a number of unforeseen consequences, like disinvestment in the core, high transportation costs, unwalkable streets, isolation, and a lack of a sense of place. A major strategy on how to address these challenges involves utilizing the region's new light rail system, along with the TOD model, or transit-oriented development which suggests that instead of building a city for automobiles, urban centers should be built on the human scale. The valley needs to focus on balancing its mismatch between the location of housing and access to jobs and opportunity by giving residents more options, like light rail and safe, walkable neighborhoods. Equally as important is creating more conversation in the planning process allowing residents and business owners to make better informed decisions in the development of their communities. What you saw happen, particularly in, in, the, in the boom, was just this huge leap from one and two story wood frame construction to, to projects that were being proposed that were usually in the, in the neighborhood of, of uh, uh, 15 to 20 stories. Half a million or $750,000 or $2 million for, well that is completely unrealistic for any middle class person. So I would think that anybody that's uh, across the country that's philanthropic in any way would see the opportunity for more affordable housing in our central corridor. An oversupply of master planned suburban housing in leapfrog developments has left vacant and blighted properties all over the valley, which are now being seen as potential for infill developments to revitalize neighborhoods with homes, parks, shopping, and local schools closer to transit and other amenities that might sustain a more desirable quality of life. Now the new Urban Form Code is based on how people actually live here. I've lived here more than 30 years now and I'm finally thinking I'm going to stay. We've got a, a good start with implementation of, of light rail here. Unfortunately, you know, we, we haven't had an opportunity to really build upon that quite yet. And we're going to be pushing, we're going to be at the meetings. We want the light rail down to the path. The light rail needs to keep expanding. It should never stop.